Hello everyone, and we are at week number 34. This week, I wanted to share with you a few tips and tricks of things that I use in my own production. And it has to do with automation. Now, automating parameters in devices or mixer channels is really the way to breathe some new life into your tracks and tracks that you're working on. And while automating parameters is pretty easy in Reason and Record, there may be instances where you've recorded a gesture or some automated parameter and you want to use it either in the same song on a different device or maybe use it in a completely different song. But what I've done for my own purposes is I've created an automation toolbox of sorts and I use this in many different songs when I want to repeat a gesture that I've recorded. And what I'm going to do is show you how I created it and how you can use it in your own productions. I've uploaded a Reason song file that contains all the automation clips that we will be going over, and you can download it from this link. This is a Reason 5 song file and can only be opened in either Reason 5 or Record 1.5. As you can see by looking at the song, there are quite a lot of different types of automation clips available. I've created everything from sine, saw, and pulse type waveforms to exponential and logarithmic curves and many others. Notice that the clips are all on a 14 by 2 mixer and are assigned to the channel levels. This is just so that I had a place to put them. The automation data that's contained in each clip can be used on just about any other parameter and can be sped up or slowed down according to your needs. Let's start out with something simple. I have a subtractor playing a chord progression and I would like to have the filter cutoff frequency open and close in a sine wave pattern that completes a full cycle every bar. To automate that parameter, I can either right-click and select Edit Automation, and an automation lane will be created on the Subtractor Sequencer track, or use the Track Parameter Automation button in the Sequencer window right here. Now, I just drag copy the sine wave automation clip by holding down the Alt Option key while dragging the clip to the automation lane. I can change the speed of the automation by using the new Stretch Clip to Tempo function, which is accessed by holding down the Alt Option key, and while holding it down, clicking and dragging on one of the clip handle arrows to the right to go slower or to the left to go faster. I can copy and paste this automation clip as many times as I need, and also choose different automation clips if I want a different effect. Notice all the different types of automation clips that I've created. Some are a full value change from 0 to 127, and some are in percentage ranges of 75%, 50%, and 25%. I mentioned that even though these clips exist in a mixer level automation lane, they can be used to automate any parameter. There may be an instance where the values of the parameter that you want to automate do not follow a 0 to 127 value format. Let's say, for example, the pan knob on a mixer channel. Let's take this decreasing sign automation clip here and apply this to the pan of the subtractor mix channel. Notice that when I drag copy it to the automation lane I created, it has all these different colored bars on the clip. That means that the clip is considered an alien clip which means that it has values that do not correlate to the value format of this automation lane. We do have the ability to correct this by using the Adjust Alien Clips to Lane function. You access this by right-clicking on the clip and selecting Adjust Alien Clips to Lane. And just like that, it will fix it so that it works for the automated parameter. Since you can have multiple songs open and can copy and paste clips from one song to another, I usually have the Automation Toolbox song open in the background while I'm working on another song. The Logarithmic, Exponential, S-Curve, and Linear Fade-In and Out clips are great for using with mixer channels for audio material, 
and also for the master fader on record when you are doing the final mix and need a fade out or a fade in to a song or a track. Again, you can adjust how fast or slow you want them to be by using the stretch clip to tempo function. Now for fun, I created a little mixer level demo automation that simulates a sine wave and also did the same for the BV-512 to control the band levels, as you can see here. The way I did this is to use the same sine wave clip and copy it to each one of the channel level parameters that I wanted to automate. Then I shifted the clip forward by one eighth note for each ascending automation lane, like this. And any extra clip info that resided outside of the loop endpoint, I spliced it off using the razor tool and moved it back to the beginning of that clip to fill in the empty space from shifting the clip forward. And now when you set up a loop for, let's say, eight bars, the cycle never ends. This automation clip toolbox is really great for anyone who has been looking for a curved tool to draw in automation, like is available in some other DAW software. And again, you can get this from the link below. Just make sure that you type it in exactly as it appears, using capitalization. Otherwise, you're going to have problems downloading the file. Well, that's it for another week of 52 Reason and Record Tips. Again, I'm James Bernard, and I will see you all next week. Bye.